Jack Nicholson, American actor and filmmaker. John Joseph Nicholson is an American retired actor and filmmaker. Nicholson is widely regarded as one of the greatest actors of the 20th century. Throughout his five-decade career he received numerous accolades, including three Academy Awards, three BAFTA Film Awards, six Golden Globe Awards, and a Grammy Award. Born, April, the 22nd, 1937, age 87 years. Neptune City, New Jersey, United States. Spouse, Sandra Knight, M. 1962-1968. Children, Ray Nicholson, Lorraine Nicholson, Jennifer Nicholson, Caleb James Goddard, Honey Hallman, Tessa Grand. Height, 1.77 M. Parents, June Francis Nicholson, Donald Fursalo. Grandchildren, Duke Nicholson, Sean Norfleet. Jack Nicholson, an American actor, producer, director, and screenwriter, is a three-time Academy Award winner and 12-time nominee. Nicholson is also notable for being one of two actors, the other being Michael Caine, who have received an Oscar nomination in every decade from the 60s through the aughts. Nicholson was born on April 22, 1937, in Neptune, New Jersey. He was raised believing that his grandmother was his mother, and that his mother, June Frances Nicholson, a showgirl, was his older sister. He discovered the truth in 1975 from a Time magazine journalist who was researching a profile on him. His real father is believed to have been either Donald Fursillo, an Italian-American showman, or Eddie King, Edgar Kirschfeld, born in Latvia and also in show business. Jack's mother's ancestry was Irish, and smaller amounts of English, German, Scottish, and Welsh. Nicholson made his film debut in a B-movie titled The Cry Baby Killer, 1958. His rise in Hollywood was far from meteoric, and for years, he sustained his career with guest spots in television series and a number of Roger Corman films, including The Little Shop of Horrors, 1960. Nicholson's first turn in the director's chair was for Drive, he said, 1971. Before that, he wrote the screenplay for The Trip, 1967 and co-wrote Head, 1968, A Vehicle for the Monkeys. His big break came with Easy Rider, 1969, and his portrayal of liquor-soaked attorney George Hansen, which earned Nicholson his first Oscar nomination. Nicholson's film career took off in the 1970s with a definitive performance in Five Easy Pieces, 1970. Nicholson's other notable work during this period includes leading roles in Roman Polanski's noir masterpiece Chinatown, 1974, and One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, 1975, for which he won his first Best Actor Oscar. The 1980s kicked off with another career-defining role for Nicholson as Jack Torrance in Stanley Kubrick's adaptation of Stephen King's novel The Shining, 1980. A string of well-received films followed, including Terms of Endearment, 1983, which earned Nicholson his second Oscar, Prizzy's Honor, 1985, and The Witches of Eastwick, 1987. He portrayed another renowned villain, the Joker, in Tim Burton's Batman, 1989. In the 1990s, he starred in such varied films as A Few Good Men, 1992, for which he received another Oscar nomination, and a dual role in Mars Attacks. 1996. Although a glimpse at the darker side of Nicholson's acting range reappeared in The Departed, 2006, the actor's most recent roles highlight the physical and emotional complications one faces late in life. The most notable of these is the unapologetically misanthropic Melvin Udall in As Good As It Gets, 1997, for which he won his third Oscar. Shades of this persona are apparent in About Schmidt, 2002, Something's Gotta Give, 2003, and The Bucket List, 2007. Nicholson has six children by five different women. Jennifer Nicholson, born in 1963, from his only marriage to Sandra Knight, which ended in 1966, Caleb Goddard, born in 1970, with five easy pieces, 1970, co-star Susan Anspach, who was automatically adopted by Anspach's then-husband Mark Goddard, Honey Hallman, born in 1982, with Danish supermodel Winnie Hallman, Lorraine Nicholson, born in 1990, and Ray Nicholson, born in 1992, with minor actress Rebecca Broussard, and Tessa Gurin, born in 1994, with real estate agent. Jenny Marie Gurin, 
Nicholson's longest relationship was the 17 non-monogamous years he spent with Angelica Houston. This ended when Broussard announced she was pregnant with his child. Family Spouse Sandra Knight, June 17, 1962, to August 8, 1968, divorced, one child. Children Jennifer Nicholson Caleb Goddard Honey Hallman Lorraine Nicholson Ray Nicholson Tessa Gurin Parents June Francis Nicholson Relatives Duke Nicholson, grandchild Sean Norfleet, grandchild Ethel May Nicholson, grandparent John J. Nicholson, grandparent Lorraine Nicholson, sibling Walter Duffy, grandchild Daisy Duffy, grandchild Hank Duffy, grandchild Trademarks Dark sunglasses Untamed hair and shark's grin Often plays charming, anti-authoritarian characters Frequently works with Danny DeVito. Frequently works as a character with mental instability. His somewhat maniacal laugh. Method acting. Triangular eyebrows. Unmistakable smooth, low-pitched, drawling voice. Trivia. Boyhood friends with Danny DeVito. Nicholson's relatives and DeVito's relatives managed a hair salon together, has been nominated for an acting Oscar in five different decades. 1960s, 1970s, 1980s, 1990s, and 2000s, and in two different centuries, 20th and 21st. Once described the Joker as a psychotic version of Bugs Bunny. Claims his personal favorite performances are his works in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, 1975, Batman, 1989, Hoffa, 1992, and As Good As It Gets, 1997. Loves jokes at his expense so much that he showed up at every Academy Awards hosted by Billy Crystal, who in turn would incorporate Nicholson somehow in the telecast. After his first screen test, Louis B. Mayer said to him, I don't know what we can use you for, but if we ever do need you, we'll need you real bad. Batman creator Bob Kane personally recommended him for the role of the Joker in Batman, 1989. His famous trademark sunglasses have prescription lenses, since he is very short-sighted. His art collection includes Matisse, Warhol, Tamara de Lempica, and Picasso. The collection is estimated to be worth over $100 million. Turned down the lead role of Roy Neary in Close Encounters of the Third Kind, 1977, even though he knew the movie would be a success as he felt that the special effects would overwhelm any actor in the movie. Attended his 50th high school reunion at Manasquan High School in Manasquan, New Jersey. Needless to say, his classmates were surprised and delighted that he attended. Is an accomplished and well-paid ghostwriter. Dedicated his Oscar for As Good As It Gets, 1997, to J.T. Walsh, his co-star in A Few Good Men, 1992, who had died shortly before the Academy Awards in 1998. Once said in an interview that if he can get Jim Carrey, Tom Cruise, Robert Downey Jr., and Johnny Depp to be a part of it, he will start his own wrestling promotion. Demolished his neighbor Marlon Brando's bungalow, which he bought for £3.4 million following the actor's death in 2004. Long refused to do any televised interviews except for press conferences, but in recent years, he has occasionally agreed to speak briefly when approached by reporters. He has not appeared on a talk show since 1971. Used to be an office worker for William Hanna and Joseph Barbera at MGM's cartoon department. They actually offered him a job as an animator at the studio, but he declined in order to focus on his acting career. Was interested in playing the father in A Christmas Story, 1983, but the budget could not meet his high salary demands. He was asked to play the role of Michael Corleone in The Godfather, 1972. He turned it down, suggesting that an actual Italian should play the part. He was also considered for Tom Hagen. His mother, June Frances, Nicholson, had Irish and smaller amounts of English, Scottish, Welsh, and Pennsylvania Dutch, German, ancestry. Jack never knew his biological father and was raised by his maternal grandparents. He was led to believe that June was his older sister and his grandparents were his parents. It was not until 1974 
when a Time magazine reporter researched his life, that he learned the truth. An Italian immigrant named Donald Fursillo, who was married briefly to June, may have been Jack's biological father. It is also possible that Jack's biological father was Edgar A. Kirschfeld, a Latvian-born entertainer, known as Eddie King. Nicholson has chosen not to investigate further. His first job was as mail clerk in the Hanna, Barbera cartoon division of MGM. After presenting the Best Picture Oscar at the 78th Annual Academy Awards, 2006, to Crash, 2004, he told the press he was surprised as he thought Brokeback Mountain, 2005, would win. Nicholson then told the press that he himself had voted for Brokeback Mountain, 2005. As of 2009, he has an estimated fortune of nearly $240 million. Lives on famed Bad Boy Drive aka Mulholland Drive in Beverly Hills, California. It's nicknamed so because its residents have included former Hollywood bad boys Warren Beatty and the late Marlon Brando. With his win for As Good As It Gets, 1997, in 1998, he became the first actor in 20 years to win both a Best Actor Golden Globe comedy and an Oscar for the same role. Has owned a Mercedes-Benz 600 for 30 years, which he considers the best touring car of all time. He owned a car that was driven by Tommy Chong's character in Up in Smoke, 1978. Presented the Best Picture Oscar eight times, 1972, 1977, 1978, 1990, 1993, 2006, 2007, and 2013, more than any other actor or actress. Though he was a relative newcomer and lacked the status typically associated with Best Picture presenters, the then two-time nominee took on the assignment in 1972 when many better-known celebrities balked at the job, worried that they would be tainted if Stanley Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange, 1971, won the top gong and they were seen by the public as linked to the controversial picture. Nicholson, who early on declared publicly that he loved the Oscar, when the sentiment was not chic, happily obliged. In addition to presenting the Best Actors Trophy in 1999, he also presented the Thalberg Award to Warren Beatty in 2000 and an honorary award to Michelangelo Antonioni in 1995. Is an avid fan of the Los Angeles Lakers and is often seated next to his good friend Lou Adler. He rarely misses a Lakers home game. Contrary to popular belief, Nicholson never had production companies schedule the filming of a movie he was in to accommodate his attendance at sporting events. Nicholson is also a lifelong fan of the New York Yankees. Each one of the films for which he has won an Oscar has also won Best Actress in a Leading Role, Louise Fletcher, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, 1975, Shirley MacLaine, Terms of Endearment, 1983, Helen Hunt, As Good As It Gets, 1997 is a lifelong devotee of Bob Dylan and Louis Armstrong. He was awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame at 6925 Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood, California on December 4, 1996. In 1994, in an apparent bout of rage, he smashed a man's car window in with a golf club. He expressed remorse for the incident in an interview with U.S. Magazine. Two of his three Oscar-winning performances were directed by James L. Brooks. This makes him one of four actors to win two Oscars under the same person's direction. The other three are, Walter Brennan for Come and Get It, 1936, and The Westerner, 1940, both directed by William Wyler, Diane Wiest for Hannah and Her Sisters, 1986, and Bullets Over Broadway, 1994, both directed by Woody Allen, and Christoph Waltz for Inglorious Bastard, 2009, and Django Unchained, 2012 both directed by Quentin Tarantino. Has six children by five women, Jennifer Nicholson, b. September 13, 1963, with Sandra Knight, Caleb Goddard, b. September 26, 1970, with Susan Ansbach, Honey Hallman, b. January 26, 1982, with Winnie Hallman, Lorraine Nicholson, b. April 16, 1990, and Ray Nicholson, b. February 20, 1992, with Rebecca Broussard, and Tessa Gurin, B. August 15, 1994, with Jenny Marie Gurin. Quotes The average celebrity meets, in one year, ten times the amount of people that the average person meets in his entire life. 
On the $5 million he earned for a few good men, 1992, it was one of the few times when it was money well spent. Regarding terms of endearment, 1983, when I read the part, I knew I'd win the Oscar for it. You only lie to two people in your life, your girlfriend and the police. If you get an impulse in a scene, no matter how wrong it seems, follow the impulse. It might be something, and if it ain't, take two. A star on a movie set is like a time bomb. That bomb has got to be defused so people can approach it without fear. On the birth of his son, after having had two daughters, I finally got it right. When I come up against a director who has a concept that I don't agree with, or maybe I just haven't thought of it or whatever, I'd be more prone to go with them than my own because I want to be out of control as an actor, I want them to have the control, otherwise it's going to become predictably my work, and that's not fun. I only take Viagra when I am with more than one woman. I'm not a raver anymore, all good things must come to an end. I was particularly proud of my performance as the Joker. I considered it a piece of pop art. My motto is, more good times. A question you always ask in acting is, where were you going if this scene didn't interrupt the movements of the character? You're new here, aren't you? Nicholson, who rarely is seen in public without his sunglasses, replied when asked by a photographer to take off his glasses for a photo. There's a period just before you start a movie when you start thinking, I don't know what in the world I'm going to do. It's free-floating anxiety. In my case, though, this is over by lunch the first day of shooting. Every director implored me, Jack, can't you talk a little bit faster? It was like a hot button for me, and I would become hateful. So when Roman started to say it, I began and he said, Jack, this movie is one hundred and something pages long. To have a movie that is screen-able, you'll have to talk a little faster. Roman Polanski directed him in Chinatown, 1974. On turning down the role played by Robert Redford in The Sting, 1973, I liked the period, the whole project and I knew it would be commercial, but at the time, I needed to put my energies into a movie that really needed them. I needed to take a risk. On being nominated for an Oscar for the third time for The Last Detail, 1973, the first time I was up for an Oscar, I thought I would win it. But I didn't have as sharp a view as I do now. The second time. I expected to lose, and deservedly lose, to George C. Scott. But even getting a nomination blows my mind. I'd love to win, but now that I've had several good performances that people at large have liked, it becomes harder to excite them. And familiarity breeds contempt. So I mean it when I say that if you can't appreciate Brando, I wouldn't know how to talk to you. If there's anything obvious in life, this is it. Other actors don't go around discussing who is the best actor in the world, because it's obvious Marlon Brando is. I don't want people to know what I'm actually like. It's not good for an actor. I'm very contra my constituency in terms of abortion, because I'm positively against it. I don't have the right to any other view. My only emotion is gratitude, literally, for my life. On Stanley Kubrick, just because you're a perfectionist doesn't mean you're perfect. Beer, it's the best damn drink in the world. 1992, I don't believe in God now. I can still work up an envy for someone who has a faith. I can see how that could be a deeply soothing experience. As an actor, I have no desire for anybody to understand my past work. Period. 1996, I just wish every film I liked wasn't either foreign or made in America, but with such terrible difficulty. This is the worst period ever for trying to do interesting work. With my sunglasses on, I'm Jack Nicholson. Without them, I'm fat and 70. I would be so happy if I didn't smoke, for a lot of reasons. I can't believe that I can't break the habit. I don't want to be lying around, dying in Cedar sinai Hospital and thinking that I was as stupid enough, a man who is as petrified of dying as I am, to have done it to myself. I'm a real fraidy cat about mortality. The thing I like about the Joker is that his sense of humor is completely tasteless. We were moving to a freer society before AIDS. Most people who investigated this knew that if you were not shooting up or getting f asterisk 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 get in the hiney, you were as likely to get AIDS as you were to have a safe fall on your head while walking down Wilshire Boulevard. But you could not proselytize this view. 
the facts were almost useless. You couldn't give a woman the facts and have her respond, oh, all right. Salaries. How do you know, 2010, $12 million. Anger management, 2003, $20 million. About Schmidt, 2003, $10 million. The Pledge, 2001, $10 million. As Good As It Gets, 1997, $15 million. Wolf, 1994, $13 million. Hoffa, 1992, $10 million. A Few Good Men, 1992, $5 million. The Two Jakes, 1990, $5 million. Batman, 1989, $6 million, plus profit percentage, totaling $60 million. Ironweed, 1988, $5 million. The Witches of Eastwick, 1987, $6 million. Heartburn, 1986, $4 million. Terms of Endearment, 1983, $1 million plus profit percentage, totaling $9 million. The Shining, 1980, $1,250,000. The Missouri Breaks, 1976, $1,250,000 plus 10% of all gross receipts above $12.5 million. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, 1975, $1,000,000 plus 15% gross. The Fortune, 1975, 10% gross from the very first dollar. Tommy, 1975, $75,000. Chinatown, 1974, $500,000. On a clear day you can see forever, 1970, $12,500. <laughs>